First up, we have a presentation from Archer Materials. Archer Materials trading under the ASX code AXE with a market cap of 137 million is a technology company that operates within the semiconductor industry. The company is developing advanced semiconductor devices, including chips relevant, relevant to quantum technology and medical diagnostics. Archer utilizes its global partnerships to develop these technologies for potential deployment and use across multiple industries. Presenting for us today is Archer CEO, Dr. Mohamed Chukher. Mohamed, welcome. Thanks for your time and over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, everyone who registered today and who is attending today's presentation. My objective today really is in two parts, uh, and it's to provide those new to Archer with a little bit of an understanding of, of what Archer is doing and where it's headed. And for those of our longer standing shareholders, really to just attempt to reinforce the rationale for, for holding such a positive view about our progress and our achievements. Our next slide, please. This is an easy sentence to read, but I think it packs a fair bit. Uh, it really puts Archer and its team on a, a global platform in a sector whose potential is very difficult to conceive. And I think, yeah, today Archer is probably best known for its work in developing a quantum chip that could potentially enable some amazing things. And we call this technology our 12CQ chip. And today I'll present both technologies that we're developing, including Archer's biochip. Next slide, please. And this slide, I, I believe this is one of the most important slides in my presentation. I, I believe this because I think it really shows why we're in a position today to create value in the years ahead. And it helps that we're well-funded into the foreseeable future. And I guess to summarize it, it shows that we have a focus on technology development right at the cutting edge in growing critical industries. And we're working towards commercialization of these advanced technologies by protecting our IP and by partnering with other global players, both small and large. And I think as you'd appreciate, this is complex work, but what I can say is that we're doing it. And the next few slides in the presentation will, will give you a good idea of where exactly we operate within the global semiconductor industry. And it's indeed an industry that can really be difficult to comprehend. Next slide, please. I think this slide really shows here how Archer fits into the semiconductor value chain. And it fits into the value chain through the fabulous model. Um, I think it's some words that really you need to take away from today's presentation, the fabulous model. It's, it's fabulous companies who've seen the largest share of profit value creation over the past several years. And what I find appealing about the fabulous business model in the semiconductor industry is that it's been proven to scale and scale big. And companies that have adopted this model you would have heard of. I mean, they're called NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, Qualcomm, so forth. Um, really, the fabulous model means that Archer focuses on the technology design and the development to create its chips. And we then outsource the manufacturing and testing to our partners in the value chain. And these include semiconductor foundries, these multi-billion dollar foundries, these space stations on Earth, right? Um, and also to other constituents within the supply chain, like assembly and testing companies. Um, what I can say here is to summarize, both the quantum chip and the biochip are still in the early stages, but they're progressing. And over the next few slides, I'll summarize our story, Archer's story really over the last 18 months and our development over the last 18 months. Next slide, please. This slide here, I mean, we start with our 1-2-CQ chip and, and really what I wanna be able to, to communicate here is that our work, our technology is very highly complex and there are no shortcuts. It is very painstaking development and our 
Our longer term shareholders will know quite well that it's this painstaking development that has led to our progress and led to our achievements. And firstly, like I said, with our regards to the 12CQ chip, we're one of few companies globally developing this type of quantum technology. Um, we're talking about probably 20 companies in the world, right? And so we, we choose to aim high. We have that ambition and, and our goal of our 12CQ chip is ultimately to make quantum technology more widely accessible. But if we really want to realize the full potential of quantum, technological challenges must be overcome. You have to. It is technology right at the bleeding edge. And this is what we are doing by developing our 12CQ chip. That's our focus at Archer. And some of you on the webinar today, you recently would have seen our announcement on the pulsed electron spin resonance microsystem chip, this PESR chip. It's this chip here in the image um, on the right-hand side and, and a, a zoom in of, of some of the components there. This device that's shown here, it really is an outcome of that broader development work. It's an example of the broader development work at Archer. And I see it as a real enabler on our path to our greater goal. And more than that, I think it shows the strength of Archer's strategy to be an enabler for the sector. And importantly, tie in with that, that we've been protecting our IP around the world. I mean, we are talking about the global semiconductor industry. We are talking about technologies that are at the forefront of technology today. So it's been incredibly important that we have been protecting our IP around the world. And that also includes in the world's largest economies like the US, Europe, and Asia. Next slide, please. And as you'd appreciate, I think I can say this, that we, we can't stand still as a company, right? Our, our biochip is, is such exciting work. I, it's, it's incredible. I mean, look, for me, I, I think about it. You think about it, right? Just what we're working on here is producing a device which, in effect, would be able to assess a sample of fluid for a range of potential health issues. Now, that type of work is currently being performed in the laboratory. And these lab-on-chip devices, our biochip falls under these lab-on-chip devices. They are quite literally a miniaturized biomedical laboratory, an entire lab on a small chip, on a small chip that's probably about a millimeter in size. It's incredible. I mean, where technology is today, where the intersection of, for example, in our biochip biology and the semiconductor industry, it's absolutely incredible. But one thing I want to make here is that distinction between the chip and the concept of point of care. Our paradigm really focuses on the chip itself and not the concept of point of care. And over the last 18 months, what you'll see here is that our work to date is, is really hard proof. I mean, not just for the biochip, but for our quantum chip, it really is hard proof that our technologies are not blue sky or some sort of vague promise. I mean, for our biochip, for example, we're, we're focused on positioning this technology for uh, use cases that are high mobility. And it's a question I get often, a question I get often in that, what are you going to use a chip for? What's this biochip going to test for? And what I can say is that we're currently working through the process to protect our IP related to what we call the electronic readout of genetic material. And what this does is it, it could potentially open the door to on-chip detection of pathogens quite broadly. And this is an area early on uh, of particular focus uh, at Archer. Next slide, please. I think what I've just talk to you about, although very briefly, um, these are the foundations we've put in place at Archer over the past few years. It hasn't been overnight. It hasn't been a single result. Um, it's taken time to get there. It's taken time to get here in a very carefully managed approach, a very deliberate approach. And we've done so with the right partners and by working 
in the global space. Next slide, please. And throughout the rest of this year, throughout 2024, um, I'm happy to say that Archer has a solid cash position to really fund uh, our chip development and our activities. And, you know, a year is a long time, but in, in the immediate future on our path uh, for, you know, our, our ambition to grow, our activities, you know, I can basically sum up as, as including uh, really doubling down and investing into our quantum and biochip technologies and their development. Uh, strengthening our partnerships uh, globally and really putting the right building blocks in place to foster innovation. Next slide, please. I guess in summary, in this brief presentation today, uh, what I want to say is our work, our technology, it, it is highly complex. And like I said before, there's no shortcuts. It has been really rigorous development that has led to our progress and to our achievements. It's, it's incredible because, I mean, when I speak to the team, when I speak to shareholders, when I speak to investors, one thing that I constantly reiterate is that, you know, a limited vision and, and short-term horizons, it, it may make some people's working lives more comfortable, but it's not the prescription for what I believe Archer can become. And the one thing that I really wanted to convey today is that our endeavor of necessity has to be global. And over the next year and beyond, I mean, I expect and we expect to continue to make really meaningful progress. And I can say is uh, my time's up, but I'm really excited about the opportunities that are ahead of us at Archer. Thank you. Mohammed, many thanks for that. I've got quite a few questions that are coming, some quite technical. Uh, let's just kick off. Can you just discuss a little bit more how Archer's chip technology compares to peers across the industry? Very important question. Um, which chip technology? I'm going to assume it's the quantum chip technology. Uh, the way it compares is that there really only are a few other uh, materials platforms or just generally architectural platforms that have the um, you know, potential for operation under practical conditions. And, and some of those include uh, materials like nano diamonds, systems like photonics, but really Archer is in a class of its own. So it's very difficult to compare to other. Uh, technologies. The one thing I can say that in comparison is you still require, in order for you to develop your technology as a as a solid state system, so a system that is tangible, um, to go into devices, we need to be able to develop control and readout uh, for our material and integrate this quantum material in these devices. And that's what we're working on well and truly uh, within our development um, framework. Got to. There's a question here. Uh, if the tech for both chips is still in the development stage, is there any sort of timeline for when the products will be completed alongside? Is there a risk the chips will not be successfully developed? Yeah, look, I think there's always a risk there of, of the chips not being successfully developed and commercialized. And we include that in our uh, annual reports and, and our half yearlies, and, and we mention that quite clearly. Um, however, we talk about timelines. I, I think I, I was speaking to someone yesterday and I, and I answered this. Um, it's very difficult to put prescriptive timelines on a world first or a technology that's really at the forefront. Um, I understand and I appreciate that there are other technologies within quantum that uh, have been taken off the shelf and are much more well developed uh, historically than the quantum materials and technologies that we're developing. So it could be easier to provide some benchmarks if we were working on other systems. Uh, but I think I believe that the timeframes that we're working within are consistent with, with the industry and the industry that we're working in, and especially the sector of quantum technology. And a question here, how will management ensure the company's technology maintains its te te technological edge over its competitors? Continue to innovate. That, that's a, that for me is just continue to innovate. And we need to continue to work with the right partners around the world. We can't do this alone. And, and this is something that we've shown, something I've been incredibly proud of for Archer, uh, over the last two years. I mean, if you look at where we were two years ago um, and look at where we are now, I mean, we have global partners around the world that includes the largest uh, semiconductor foundries, um, you know, incredibly reputable computing companies. And the other is, of course, you know, I see it as rather trivial, but protecting our IP. So this is something that we've been active in doing and happy to say that, you know, we have patents granted all around the world. Uh, 
So patents granted in, in countries like the US, uh, China, Japan, South Korea, real innovation hubs, right, of the world um, and in Europe. Uh, so for me, it's it's two pronged. One is just continue to innovate, innovate with the right partners, and secondly, protect those innovations. Fantastic. A question here: Could you give us a bit uh, a better idea of uh, who the clients are who 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 want your chips? Yeah, look, it's a good question, and, and uh, depending on what chip we're talking about. Um, and the commercialization model, uh, we have users, for example, who would anticipate using these types of devices, but then you would have, depending on the commercial model, uh, who you would kind of do business with, right? As a company, who would you do business with? And uh, within the semiconductor industry, within the semiconductor supply chain, I, I guess there are you know, organizations that we would do business with like original equipment manufacturers. Um, for the biochip, you, you could potentially do business with the large uh, medical diagnostic companies. Uh, and within quantum, you, you can potentially do business with, um, you know, for example, in the finance sector. In the finance sector, it's it's sixty percent of the adoption of quantum technologies early on has been in finance. So that's the way I can kind of really summarize it really quickly. And uh, just one to finish up here: what are you seeing across the industry in terms of M and A? Is Archer an obvious target for some of the larger players? That's really interesting. I think earlier this year, what I would what I would say is I would point uh, investors and shareholders to uh, the JP Morgan event over in San Francisco earlier this year in, in January to get a better idea of M&A activity within the biochip space. Um, I also recommend, I mean, if you wanted to, uh, Silicon Valley Bank uh, also released uh, a recent report around M&A activity within the DX, so diagnostics and also devices space. Uh, and in terms of quantum, I think it, it's incredible. I mean, uh, it's such a huge industry and such a huge sector. I mean, you're talking about, you know, companies reaching technological goals and having step changes in their valuations that has allowed them to raise, you know, and to be valued at, um, you know, billions of dollars. So it's an incredible space with a lot of activity and just to stay informed, stay in touch. Um, and, and yeah, just do a lot of reading out there. It, there is a lot. Mohammed, that's all we have time for. There are a few questions I still haven't got to, some quite technical ones. If you could answer those online for us, that'd be really appreciated. No problem. Mohammed, many thanks for your time. Look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for having me. Ciao.